You should be good now, Keenan, I think. Yeah, just adjusting some uh, sound on my end and putting some pings out here. Okay, great. I see we have a guest Nimi. in Nimi here in the chat. <laughs> yeah, the wonderful Nimi. Welcome, Dave. Just shooting off some pings. Going to give a couple minutes for everyone to roll in here. Hey, welcome everyone rolling in here. Just given a second for the call to flesh out, shooting out some pings, and we'll get started with the recording. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Keenan, and happy first day of September. I don't know how this happened, to be honest. Well, August. I would September yeah, already. August ended, and then. Um, September, yeah, it comes after it. So surprising, but not shocking. I suppose that does typically happen. The good news for me in terms of the weather is it's still warm out, but now it seems to be a little bit cooler. So the bugs are not out as much. And so that makes it even more pleasant to actually to be outside. We had a crazy uh, mosquito season here in uh, northern Canada. Totally uh, terrifying experience. I wouldn't wish on anybody. Do you like, does that mean like bed nets or like just bug spray? I feel like when you wear a net over your head, that's like another level. It's not that bad. I'm sure you guys have worse in the States. Um, but, I mean, the solution was really just to hide inside and some bug zappers on the uh, on the uh, outside areas. Do you yeah, have the worst? I was going to say, actually, the worst mosquitoes I've ever had have actually were actually at the Boundary Waters, which is on the border of Minnesota and Canada. So it's kind of like lakes and rivers there. You can kind of go camping. And when we would camp there... We literally, you would sleep with like a net on your head because you wouldn't want to, even if your tent, you try to keep them out of your tent, there would maybe be one or two or someone in there. Um, and so you'd sleep with this net on for the whole night. There's also the uh, so-called tiger mosquito, black and white one. It, it's, uh, it originates from Southeast Asia, but it's taken over the world and it bites during the day. I think there is some, I don't want to call it legitimate. I'll just say some argument that someone is making that we should like actually kill off mosquitoes. Maybe not like immediately, but just like do something to gradually decrease their population. And everyone's like, you know, whenever it says this, they're like, well, it's going to affect the ecosystem. It's going to have all these like downstream effects. But that's, I don't know, there is maybe some argument that it, like mosquitoes actually don't add any value. Hmm. Yeah. Low value insects. I like that. Bird, bird food, right? That's one thing at least. Yeah, and then the bird, you affect the birds, that affects everything else. I like the idea of like, uh, like neutering them almost so they don't uh, have the ability to suck our blood. Uh, but anyways, uh, not to get too sidetracked into mosquito chatter here, let's get started with the agenda. Uh, let me kick off 
recording segmentation and we'll get rolling. Hello, hello, good morning, or GM to everybody. I'm your host, Keenan. Welcome to the September 1st, 2022 weekly DX staff community call held here in the beautiful Twitter spaces. Uh, today, we're going to keep things a bit more brief, uh, mostly focusing on some active form threads uh, and updates from our squads, uh, as opposed to this uh, kind of overarching discussion topic at the start of the call. Uh, just quickly before we start, uh, it's, of course, great to be here on Twitter spaces, but there's still no way to natively chat which is a bit frustrating. You can now tweet directly to the space, I think, uh, at the bottom right, uh, but it's not really much of a discussion, uh, if I recall. Uh, if you want to join the discussion, uh, we have our uh, community mostly on Discord that uses it uh, in tandem. You can click on the DXDAO icon, uh, who is the host of this call. Uh, click on the Discord link. It's directly in the profile. Uh, discussion is going to be held in the Mothership text channel, uh, and you should be able to find that near the top of the server. Cool. Let's get right into things, uh, starting with weekly recaps. Um, I guess we have Adam here. Would you like to give us a bit on Swapper and what's going on in the Swapper squad? Absolutely. So I think last week we did the execution for the beta 15. So that was like, is now live. And then we start recapping what should be on the beta 16. So we decided to include expansion to the eco router and this is one of the interesting things so we decided to expand the eco router to optimism and if you think about it when we when we speak of swapper one of the core values of swapper is empowering users to not just tap into the native liquidity of swapper but also get access to all the other amms or other liquidities within one dashboard and all all of this in a decentralized manner so from that point, from that point of uh, from that point, we decided to go to Optimism after Polygon. Obviously, we don't have much of an insight into what is adding value to the DAP itself, but we believe that Eco Router is one of those things that is definitely helping users find the best uh, markets for their trades, and that's going to be there. Uh, and then we also added something interesting, and that is Bridge Swap. And I like to call it swap and bridge because you always swap and then bridge the token. But this feature allows you to go from one token to another token on another chain. Uh, and then we also have like Curve V2 integration. So this is going to tap into the factory contract of uh, Curve contracts on every on every chain that we're going to support. And it's going to give you access to more markets, with, all with the, the same features as you see in the eco router. And then obviously the last thing is the expeditions. So I don't think if we're going to discuss this right now. So I'm going to probably going to give it a as a surprise for you when we actually launch it. And then you can experience it for yourself. Excellent. Thank you very much. Adam, uh, and we did share a little bit of alpha on expeditions last week, uh, but like you said, uh, trying to keep the excitement there, uh, and there'll be lots to explore once it's ready. Uh, yeah, thank you again. Let's chat next. Um, the 500k buyback proposal, uh, which has passed, uh, and kind of the next steps of that. Uh, Chris, I believe you kind of wrote that proposal. Would you like to run over it? Sure thing. And maybe the next two points um, are, are related. Um, so I guess where we are right now in terms of the uh, DXT buyback, there's 116 ETH that's still in the GP relayer on Gnosis chain to execute buybacks. Um, I believe there are three orders or depending on whether not Dave's uh, proposal submission went through on DX vote earlier. Um, so I think those are live right now. The orders are smaller. They're around six or seven ETH because the uh, average daily trading volume is only around 40K uh, the last three months. So these are smaller orders. Um, and just like kind of an interesting, well, I guess, yeah, so that that is 116 uh, ETH that is still on the previous buyback proposal extension. Um, and that can, uh, that will go off, um, continue to go off. I think probably doing the math, that's probably another 15, 20 orders. So maybe takes a couple more weeks uh, to do that, depending on how the trade volume uh, operates. And so that will kind of go on um, as planned. Uh, but to, at, after that ends, uh, this new 500K authorization proposal can kick in. 
Uh, and as you said, it was actually just a signal proposal. So there would have to be another one that sends the funds themselves. We actually could use funds from Gnosis Chain if we wanted to, because there's some ETH there. Um, but this 500K authorization pr uh, proposal passed with a whole bunch of new parameters on um, kind of on how the buyback is conducted, uh, mostly related to uh, how we calculate the DXD NAV ratio. So that's how much the circulating market cap is to the treasury NAV. Um, so there were some adjustments to the treasury NAV there that you can see in the proposal there. Um, but yeah, so that will kick in as soon as, what's well, kind of already kicked in, but that will only be needed or useful when the 116 WEF in the GP relayer uh, runs out in the next uh, couple weeks here. Uh, and then the buybacks will be able to continue uh, on the normal course. And then maybe just like a little snapshot into where things are right now. Just saw this order. I mean, uh, this morning there or last night, there was a bigger-ish sale on, uh, I just saw on mainnet and Gnosis chain and, and a little bit on Arbitrum uh, in terms of uh, selling DXD. Um, I guess the one thing that's noteworthy of that is looking at the DXD ETH LPs on both mainnet and Gnosis chain because uh, we've recently raised the fee on mainnet to 0.5% and then the swap fee on Gnosis chain has always been 0.6%. Um, so even with that, that sell today, the pretty, pretty big sell today, uh, a lot of the DXD ETH LPs on Swapper um, are, I think, absorbing that with fees very well. And, you know, just looking at the proposals that have passed and the the um, the kind of momentum of the buyback, I mean, I think it's still like a one-way trajectory in terms of DXD. It already has 116 ETH that will be sent purchasing DXD. It's already approved 500K um, of DXD to be purchased after that 116 ETH is gone. Um, and then we get into maybe the next discussion about the long term, but we've got the DXD token working group kicking off in, in a little bit. So um, still as optimistic as, as ever on, on DXD, but in terms of where may be an opportunity to take advantage of some of the, the volatility, uh, I think being an LP on swapper now with the higher swap fees um, uh, can allow some of that there. Um, so that's it, for, I think, for the, the buyback. Um, and then I can maybe move to the DXD token working group next. Um, so yeah. this was a, yeah, unless you wanted. I was just going to say, we kind of have three of your topics in a row. I want to kind of chop that up for you so you're not stuck. You. But uh, this is a really good segue for the working group if you want to do that now. Uh, and then the next topic we can kind of uh, break up a little. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so the DXD token working group will kick off in just over an hour. Um, so this will be the, the, the first call the proposal passed um, last week. And this will be an initiative that, uh, you know, takes place probably over the next two months. And with the goal of finding a new token model that um, is agreed upon by the community, agreed upon by DXD holders, agreed upon by DXD governance, and will really set DXD into the future. You know, I think a lot of... <laughs> Uh, you know, we think of the last year on these calls, a lot of what Dave has been doing or I've been doing is kind of updating you on like the state of the buyback and executing the buyback and kind of how that uh, how that all works, which is really, really important. But that is something we were kind of doing ad hoc on on our own. And it wasn't really like a clear model that is like this is what DXD is going to be driving value going forward. Uh, and it doesn't require all this like day-by-day -day explanation of how things are kind of executed. So I think that's the end goal is to have a, um, a model that everyone has confidence in that we can kind of build towards and have consensus around. Um, and in order to do that, we want to be able to get as much feedback from DXD holders, from the community, different ideas on how different projects are, are, are doing this so far. So this working group is an initiative to just kind of gather all of our um, headspace and kind of be able to brainstorm some ideas um, for ways to move forward. Um, I'll be like, putting things in the forum a lot. Um, so hopefully kind of the, the role that maybe I'll be playing is trying to like gather feedback and information from other people and then share it uh, around there. And we will be recording this call. And also, as I said, the things in the forum. So hopefully this can be something that even if you're not attending these calls, you can kind of see uh, and have some different ideas on, on where we're going. The call in just a bit is going to be, you know, a, a maybe typical kickoff call. So we're going to talk about where we've come from and where we want to go. And there, you know, a lot of people on this call will be very familiar with some of those things, but uh, there will be some other people who don't have all the history. And so maybe just establishing a shared history is important. Um, and then talking about um, you know, some initial ideas on that, some solution requirements, like what would we need to, what would be the, the, the required things that would need to be in, in a solution. Um, yeah. And so a couple, those are a couple of those things too. And yeah, as I said, that will be in, 
75 uh, minutes on a new Jitsi link, DC token WG. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much, Chris. And I guess a good uh, kind of shake up here, give you your voice a little bit of a break. Uh, very quickly, uh, Swapper Farms, uh, the latest epoch, I believe 2526 on Gnosis Chain and uh, respectively 2627 on Arbitrum. They started about 15 minutes ago. Uh, so you can find those on Arbitrum and on Gnosis Chain. Uh, if you caught the discussion here in the last week or so, excuse me, you'll know that... Um, Swapper emissions are coming to their end, uh, at least as uh, in the original proposal. In fact, uh, and we'll chat about this a little bit at the end of the call, uh, Swapper token actually formally had its one-year anniversary, I believe, yesterday, and then the redeployment is in two days. Uh, we'll have to check that, uh, but planning some fun stuff around there as well. Um, a year of Swapper is really crazy. It felt like just yesterday, uh, the Arbitrum launch and all. Um but yeah, uh, for today's farming rewards, uh, pay attention. There isn't an insane amount of changes as we're rolling into the end of the emissions uh, and the community will be deciding in the next week or two uh, kind of what to do going forward. You know, if there's going to be pausing of rewards, if there's going to be, um, you know, some kind of different strategy. Um, but mainly on Arbitrum, our main pair is Swapper, ETH, uh, Rap Bitcoin, DXD, Curve, Badger. Uh, and then a little bit more in our partner pairs on Gnosis Chain as well, as well as some GNO rewards on the WBTC, GNO XDI and WEATH, um, GNO DXD, Link GNO, uh, and Cow pairs, uh, as well as Key, uh, I guess Key Protocol. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce uh, the name of that one. Um, but yeah, super exciting stuff. Um, pay attention this coming week. Uh, probably going to have a big form post and maybe a governance vote for swapper holders uh, come this coming week. Uh, so pay attention to that uh, for the future of swapper emissions. Cool. And then I'll, I'll also uh, just give poor Chris here an extra second to breathe uh, and chat a bit about the Tally Ho pledge. Um, this is a, a big thing um, proposed by the Tally Ho community, uh, the Tally Ho community pledge. Uh, which I'll share a link to in the chat here uh, for those of you in the Discord chat. Uh, but basically, uh, it's talking about kind of rights, privacy, uh, access for everyone, uh, important uh, kind of um, things that the community should be in agreement on. Uh, and it's kind of spun out surrounding the Tornado Cash situation. Uh, so they kind of reached out to us uh, in light of the recent events I'm talking about here. Um, you know, we have strong vision alignment with them. We've been partners with them in the past. Uh, so kind of like gathering support uh, on an individual level and on the community level. Uh, so this proposal that I will also post in the chat here um, will indicate uh, DXDAO as an organization support of the pledge. Uh, so that includes community values, access for everyone. Uh, everyone should have direct access to Web3 no matter where you are. Uh, radical transparency. All code should be 100% open source for you to copy, fork, or remix and full community ownership uh, and that value must flow transparently to you in the community, not corporate insiders. Uh, so yeah, those are the kind of three uh, primary values that the pledge uh, goes through. Um, they also go a bit deeper into kind of uh, details surrounding protection of your rights, uh, decentralization of wall infrastructure, uh, other very interesting things. Sorry, it looks like my phone just cut out for a second. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very necessary thing, uh, I think. Um, there's been a lot going on in the space, uh, a lot of dangerous precedents being set. Uh, so I think it's important that DXDAO, uh, and of course, this is my personal opinion, uh, indicate its support of this pledge. Um, of course, if we can find a way to, to sign it on chain, that would be even more interesting. Uh, but the more important thing is just getting a signal that DXDAO as an organization supports this pledge. Uh, and on a more community level, I'd recommend everyone here, um, you know, take the pledge, uh, you'll have to sign on chain. Uh, there is, of course, people uh, believing that this is related to an airdrop in some way, shape, or form. So if that's an incentive to you to do it, then do it that way. Uh, but I think it's a very important uh, precedent to set here. Um, I guess the last thing on that topic is that the signal proposal has been submitted yesterday. Uh, it's pending boosting, I think, for an hour. Uh, you'll see a ping in our governance channel, eBase, and in Discord. Uh, to point to voting on that proposal. Uh, so pay attention to that. Cool. Uh, so let's swing back to uh, 
to poor Chris here uh, with delegating ENS tokens to caneyfork.eth, another important forum post that's been out for a little bit. Uh, we'd love to get a bit of context on that, Chris. I just want to scream tally ho whenever you're saying that. It's just like tally ho. Um, I don't know. I guess it's just for this thing, or maybe they could tally ho is like a it was a way of making pronouncements about uh, your values to the crypto world. You just say tally ho. Uh, but anyway, that is not what is. Uh, yeah. So the next item is delegate ENS tokens to Caney Fork. Um, so this is something that's been discussed on uh, uh, the last couple of governance discussions. And I think as most people know here, Zeke Stow is a heavy, I like to say, is the uh, biggest user of ENS.eth uh, in terms of hosting sites. I don't really know that another project that relies on it as much. All of our products, our main website, are all hosted on the .eth. Um, uh, our host on .eth, and that's how everyone kind of access them. I think it's a really powerful um, primitive, and we also, DeekStow has also been exploring lots of other ways. Uh, we'll get to Mimi in just a second, but that's another project that's building on top of ENS. Um, and when ENS token launched just about a year ago, it was, uh, DeekStow was given a grant of uh, 48,000 ENS tokens. Those are sitting in the treasury, and this proposal would be the first, um, I guess, uh, instance or excursion of Deke's DAO participating in ENS governance. Um, so right now, the only way to do that, though, is through delegation. So Deke's DAO would delegate the voting power of the ENS tokens in its treasury to Caney Fork's uh, address, and then Caney Fork could vote on behalf of Deke's DAO. Um, now, long term, I think Deke's DAO should definitely be interested in being like a very uh, direct player in ENS governance. So we've been talking with the Discover team about like, well, is there a possible way to, to be able to allow DeekStow itself to vote on these proposals? And I think that's the long-term way. But for right now, I think it's important for DeekStow to begin operating in, Deek, in ENS governance so that it can push it into the direction um, that you know, aligns with DeekStow's interest. Uh, and I think there's a lot of things when we're talking about the dot .link service, everything you know, with the dot limo guys, there's a lot of lot of things that are happening in the ENS ecosystem and the ENS DAO that affect DXDAO. And I think it's important that there's a relationship there, a feedback loop, and where DXDAO can in insert, um, exert some influence in ENS DAO there. Um, so this proposal, um, as I said, it, it's like actually the proposal that would delegate the tokens itself. So it uses the multi-call three scheme to call the delegate function uh, and delegates it to Caney Fork's uh, address. This would take because it's the multi-call three scheme and this is not a whitelisted contract, this would take actually like 15 days to pass. So um, you may see this in uh, on the different governance discussions, at least for the next couple of weeks. Um, but before um, I submitted it, I just wanted to get the community's feedback on, on different parts because this includes kind of like a campaign platform, I guess is the best way to say it, or like what are the, what is going to influence and like how would Caney Fork vote if, if Deke's DAO is giving its, um, uh, delegation to it. So I think there's kind of like two parts of the, the ENS platform. So one would be just general guiding tenets. These are the things that um, will guide like decisions, guide um, discussions that happen in ENS uh, forums in, on calls. Uh, and the second one is uh, engagement with DX style governance. So how does uh, Caney Fork get feedback and uh, opinions of the DeekStow community? How does it kind of engage with DeekStow to make sure it's DeekStow participating in ENS, uh, in ENS DAO? So in the guiding tenants, um, just a couple of things here, you know, I think helping make ENS a sovereign decentralized protocol that is used by the world, um, advocating for .eth websites and supporting fun funding initiatives that would improve the infrastructure for hosting websites through ENS, champion on-chain governance, DAO transparency and decentralization in ENS DAO, ensure accountability for DNS, ENS token holders and appropriate funding of public goods in the, eco, in the ENS ecosystem. And then with specifically to engagement with DX DAO governance, um, uh, hope to start the, or plan to start monthly updates in the forum on in the governance discussion and also on the community call on the latest happenings in ENS DAO. Um, there aren't actually that many votes that happen in ES now, but there is actually a lot that's happening in terms of the forum and the different discussions. So I think keeping Deke's DAO up to date on that is very important. And then four major proposals, um, creating a mural proposal to get a Deke's DAO governance um, input. So we could use Snapshot, or we could use Davy, or maybe a potential wallet scheme. Um, but I think because these tokens would be Deke's DAO's 
um, the delegation, um, I think it would be, you know, how do we get that signal direct from Geeks out? And I think that's very important and part of that. Uh, and then lastly, like promote a wider ENS build, builder community with uh, Geeks DAO, ETH Limo, um, Asteroids, D Web Services, and then of course, Nimi. I think there's an opportunity for Geeks DAO to be a player in this like kind of decentralized web world. We were actually on a call yesterday um, with the .eth website subgroup. And, you know, in the discussion, it was, you know, kind of, we all got optimistic because we realized like ENS and this decentralized web is almost like a whole other vector of crypto. And it's not really like tinged or tainted with the like DeFi or NFTs. Um, and I think it's like a pretty big market when we think about like, yeah, like Tornado Cash. Yes, there's something about creating a smart contract that anyone can access and kind of can do all that. But can you prevent uh, people from getting kicked off their GitHub? Can you prevent, uh, you know, Infura from from not sending transactions? Like, there's so many other elements when we think about like a decentralized web that are different from just what is the underlying blockchain. That I think ENS is a really important part about that, and I think DeepDAO could be a leader in that too. Uh, and I think kind of move ENS DAO in that direction. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. And the proposal uh, will be up for in the forum for a couple more days, and then yeah, we'll be submitting it on chain. So any feedback, comments would be appreciated. Excellent, thank you, Chris. Uh, my only question is: Is it Davy or Davi? I was saying Davi, but I heard you say Davy, and now I'm questioning myself. Well, I do know that Keenan has the best pronunciation in DX DAO. So we have to, I guess we go with that <laughs> one. There's no Bogota. Bogota. I, I don't even remember the way I said it wrong. I think it's like Bagata. I think it's someone says like Bagata, which is kind of funny. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Uh, very excited about ENS. Um, seeing some 100% uh, mostly the form from Sid here in the chat. Um, let's move on to Nimi. I think we have actually the Nimi profile here in the chat, um, namely that Nimi was incubated by DXDAO in a past on-chain proposal uh, and maybe a bit of information on DAPCON. I'm not sure who the best to speak to this is, maybe Dave or Zet? Sure, absolutely. So uh, very happy to have received the incubation grant from DXDAO, of course. Um, we actually also uh, received the grant from ENS itself, which is really amazing. And um, yeah, looking forward to have building more features out with that. And as you said, uh, we will be at uh, DAPCON. I believe myself and Zed will be there. Um, not sure about the rest of the team, actually. And uh, yeah, I believe that's uh, 12 to 14 for something around that um, period of September. So we'll be around there uh, looking to get a bit of feedback on the product as well as just shilling out uh, Nimi. For everyone who's not aware, Nimi is here in the uh, Twitter space. So if you do want to go check it out, uh, it allows you to host your own Web3 profile page directly on your ENS domain. And um, yeah, check it out. And if you have any feedback, uh, let us know. We always appreciate uh, any feedback you guys have. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much, Dave. Super excited about Nimi as well. Uh, next up here on the agenda, uh, Infinite and kind of growing a co-org base. Uh, Nathan, interested in a little bit about kind of the process of co-orgs, our current co-orgs, and maybe if the time is right to talk a bit about our newest co-org for the Infinite Hackathon's Genesis event. Yeah, um, we, we've seen an increased interest in applications from potential co-organizers to the point that we are thinking of closing the rounds because we may end up with uh, potential co-organizers fighting for the last spot. <laughs> we don't want to get into a situation like that. Um, the currently confirmed co-organizers, for those who are not up to date, are the automation aficionados Bring Trades, the Privacy Pioneers HopperNet, and last but not least, we just um, um, got on board the Justice Arbitrators Claros, um, some of the industry OGs that uh, pretty much everybody knows about. Um, on the other end, uh, with hacker applications, we've seen a positive uptick. Up until this point, it was 
on one hand, a bit early for people to decide whether they're flying over to South America. And um, on the other hand, we haven't pushed full marketing blast with uh, still closing the round with core organizers. But uh, we've seen an uptick. We're planning some really cool and diverse um, incentives to help developers make up their minds, make it really easy on them to make the decision and pack their bags. The popular crypto podcast, uh, DeFi Slate, will drop a new um, banging episode this week. It will feature DXDAO members talking about the overall ecosystem and, of course, mention uh, some alpha about Infinite Hackathon. I'm sure a lot of listeners will be fired up and uh, we'll see a lot of applications come from it. We're also liaising on a novel partnership, I must say, with uh, the popular crypto bounties platform, Dwork. Um, it, it's something I personally am really excited about um, that could bring some innovation. And also we are chatting with members of Bankless DAO. And last but not least, we, we got highlighted with a retweet from DevCon themselves. And it seems like there's a lot of excitement. And uh, yeah, um, it seems like uh, we're going in the right direction. Of course, we never know with the macro climate um, going south, uh, markets being in red and um, all... all amidst of all this market storm, but um, we are unflinching. We're just uh, keeping on, keeping on. Yeah, super exciting to see the uptick, uh, of course, uh, from the marketing side of Infinite, uh, seeing a new landing page kind of trickling its way through on the infinite-hackathons.eth domain. Uh, and we also have some interesting posters, co-marketing to be done with our co-organizers, et cetera. Uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, and, if, you know, if you're interested in going up, please sign up, of course, infinitehackathons.eth uh, with a dash between. Uh, thank you again, Nathan. Uh, the last kind of thing on the uh, targeted agenda here, uh, and maybe this is you again, uh, but Swapper Token, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the call, is roughly one year old. Um, I think, Nathan, you might have a, a better gauge of the numbers here. Uh, but super exciting time. Uh, it felt like just yesterday, uh, the massive Arbitrum launch. Uh, maybe Nathan, you want to talk a bit about the anniversary? Yeah, um, I'd love to. So basically, uh, Swapper went live on Arbitrum 1 on August 31st last year. And it just for those that are not familiar, Swapper has already been up and running on Ethereum and Gnosis Chain for almost a year up, and that, up until that point. But... We were uh, one of the first, the very first dApps to launch on Arbitrum, and it coincided with the release of uh, Swapper token. There was a need for a redeployment, so um, the current Swapper token actually uh, was given birth on September the second. So its its actual birthday would be tomorrow, and then a couple of weeks later on September sixteenth, we launched the. Um, uh, liquidity mining campaign. I had a quick glance through the um, uh, explorers on the different networks. And it, uh, as currently the standing is, we have more than 5,400 addresses holding Swapper token on uh, Ethereum, Arbitrum, and Gnosis chain. And it seems like the right time for the next phase in, in the protocol, which is uh, community governance. There will be um, uh, interesting uh, development soon with the Swapper Guild um, seeing release. And um, I think it will help with engaging the community, um, everybody coming together and um, helping um, forge the, the future of this uh, amazing application that we've been building for the past years. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much, Nathan. Cool. Well, those of you that missed the start of this call, I was aiming for a bit of a shorter slash smaller um, kind of sync up today, missing a handful of contributors. 
Um, so kind of have an open segment here. Otherwise, we can wrap it up. Uh, one thing I will say is obviously there's a very big discussion in the forum surrounding a restructuring proposal. Um, did not include that as a part of this agenda as uh, I think governance calls and strategy calls on Wednesday and Friday uh, respectively are likely the best place and of course open place to uh, to have those discussions. Uh, but if anyone would like to comment on those, uh, you know, the, the text in the forum, any of the discussions happenings, please feel free to do so. Request a hop on the stage. Anyone that is on the stage, uh, not uh, and trying to block that discussion, just trying to keep it focused in those channels. Cool. Well, keeping an eye on the chat uh, in Discord, I guess, does anyone else have anything uh, to bring up, talk about uh, anyone here on the stage, uh, something I might have missed if we pop in? Otherwise, we'll be keeping it, as I mentioned, a bit short today. I see the response is to, uh, to leave the call ahead <laughs> of time. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you very much, uh, everyone. As I mentioned, uh, a little bit more of a brief call, missing a handful of contributors uh, and a handful of uh, other things going on. Uh, so uh, it was great to have a little bit of a quicker sync and update. Uh, we'll, of course, be recording this and hosting this on our YouTube channel, uh, where most people kind of check in and, and scrub through the latest updates. Uh, so hello to those of you listening to the recording here. Thank you, everyone, for attending this week. Uh, we'll be hosting the community call again in Discord next week, uh, Thursday, I guess the 8th of September. Uh, thank you very much for joining. We'll see you next time. Ciao. Thanks, Keenan.